writes about after Petiru and somebody's nifter, it means the Sukkim Isha Yeras of Shemit to Salo, Nulam Vyada, Vyalua Bishar Masa, Vyalua Bishar Masa, he says as follows. I read the Lushan. Ba'ilam Abba, Kishabola Shom, Naistim Lo Shmainim, Uma Asyoim, Lidrash Tara Barabin, Hatara Shalom Ba'ilam Azer, Vikola Sadikim Shemim Loi, Vali Deze Yishala. Every human being, after his Petira, is given 180 days in Shamayim, the Gros says, to say over his Chedushe Tara. And uh, all the Hasidim, the Tzadikim, the Talmud Chachamim from all the Dairis are there and listening to the Drasha, 180 days Drasha of his Torah. And through that, a person's Mishalel in Shemayim. And then he says as follows, Kamosh Kosov, he says, Noida B'Shorim Baila B'Shivto M'Zikne Oretz, Zel B'Torah. But what about a maizim? A maizim ain't okay. Ela acherim part the maizim b'shar. When it comes to his good deeds, so the people above already, the neshamas above, he doesn't talk about his own good deeds. They will be pirate. They will be particular, and they will explain all his good deeds that he had in Olam Hazeh. We at b'shar at the gates of Gan Eden. Kishen nichnus b'shar Gan Eden. That's how the grow lives grow in Mishlei. And we're at the, right after the Ptiro of a guy of David Feinstein or Shiva. And there's no question in any of our minds is that he has what to say for 180 days of Chedushim. In Chedushim Teira, in Zidiyas HaTeira, in all areas of Teira. It's, it's something which of course, there's a machai for all of us that we're going to have a 180-day slot in Shemayim and uh, hopefully all of us will be able to fill it. If a person learned for a few years, he should have 180 days worth of 24 hours of Torah. He should, I, I would imagine so. But that's going to be our challenge. But for Abdavid Zatzal, there's no question that he has 180 days worth of Torah to talk about in front of all the Tamidic are coming from all the other dairies. And of course, the Maisim Tavim, you'll hear a lot about his Maisim, his Chesed, his Beradum Mokim, Beradum Chaveroi. That's Neidu Basharim. It was hidden. He was a Tsanua in this world. But in the next world, he was so unassuming in this world. But in the next world, he gets up there right at the gate of Gan Eden. They'll be telling him the Maisim. And not only just the mice that he did, but the, the, I would say the effects and the multiple effects. And it could be the thousands of effects from all his mice and how it affected the entire world. And that is the end of Mishle. Now, I'm not worthy of speaking about the Rosh Hashiva. Yeah. But we have here a Talmud Muvak who understood the Rosh Hashiva. And in all areas, both in Halacha, Hashkafa, Hadracha, spent many years about it. It's a big zuchus for us that he came here to Waterbury to talk about the Rosh Hashiva Zatzal. But I will share with everyone a Radvaz. The Radvaz says, this Shuvas, when he talks about what a Talmud is, so he writes, El Rabbi. When a person is directed to his Rebbe, the Noi Saint Elav Libai, and he gives to his Rebbe his heart, Tis Kasher Nafsho Benafshay. Beautiful advice. There's a combination, there's an attachment of the Nefesh Arav to the Nefesh Talmud, and the Nefesh Talmud to the Nefesh Arav. And what happens then? The Yocho Olav Behashefa Sheolav. And what happens to the Talmud? He gets from the Shefa, from all the Hashpahs, from all the Ruach HaKadosh, from everything that the Rebbe has, suddenly the Talmud has that as well. And those who knew David very well, knew he had such Siat and Shemayim, such Ruach HaKadosh, no question, that a lot of his Psukim came from a certain Ruach HaKadosh, and it was a Shefa, I just have to say, that the Chassam Seifa said, Sof Yomov, he only had 13 Talmidim. Let's put that in the storm. 
and they asked him, right, you know this? 13 Talmidim, and they asked him, he had thousands upon thousands of Talmidim. And he said, but I only had 13 Talmidim who would dovet be, who were attached to me and wanted to be like me. And that's the touch of a real Talmud. That's the, that's, I think that's the Pshandas Radvaz. And this Talmud will have an added nefesh, a nefesh yisera. Not going to go there. And he's talking about in, in, in Chazal when you see that's the nafsho, the vukab in nafshay, and that's the oneness. And uh, that Baruch Hashem, there are Talmudim of David like that. And uh, in Yitz Hashem, we should all be to our Rebbeim like that. That the Nefesh be David be Nefesh and get the Hashba, the Shefa from our Rebbeim. And we should live our lives of Ahoyu Enecha, Reyes Marecha. And with that introduction, I would like to ask the Rav, the Rav Yitzhak Frankel, Talmud Muvak, Nafsho Dvuka be Nafsho of David. Uh, a paisik in his own right and a rov of the aguda of the five towns to address us. Thank you, Rabbi Kalfin, for this opportunity. <clears throat> I come, uh, it's, I've been, uh, it's uh, almost embarrassing. Um, I'm coming to be Masvid, and uh, there's so many other people that really have the real stories that you want to hear. What I mean is as follows. The Shiva used to say, and it's brought all of the, all the Masvidim are talking about it because he said it so often. He would say it over in the Schumashir quite often. He would say it to people who came to interview, to interview him, uh, he, would, he would say it. He would say that uh, he'd make the point I remember even going back uh, many, many years that uh, when you write a biography, when you see the biography about the Gedolim, there's just a limited amount. What are you going to say? It's a Gadol, he's a Goyen. You're going to talk about Rav So what are you going to say? That he was a Masmid? Okay, we finished. That's, uh, now what are you going to say next? He, was, uh, he had big Chidushim and he was a big Talmud Chacham. Okay, that's the second sentence. Where's the book? I can you figure out if you want to talk about, even though his Torah took, uh, took over 24, 24, 7, 365 of his life, right? That was the emphasis, that was the Ike emphasis, why he's called the Kudl be Israel. But you can't write a biography like that. We can admit that because by the time you finish the first paragraph, you're done. The Ike of, he would, say, he would say all the time, the Chasadim, in other words, uh, the stories of the human qualities of the individual. So you hear stories of chesed, of chesed with this person, chesed with that person, what he did over here, what he did over there. Those are things that, unfortunately, a Talmud doesn't always have a chance to see. If you were living in the neighborhood, people in the neighborhood, they saw those things on a day-to-day -day basis. People who lived on the Lower East Side, people who daven with their shiva on, on Shabbos, people who dealt with him on outside of the shiva basis. I'm coming to talk to you from the perspective of a Talmud. I didn't live in the I didn't live in the Lower East Side, so I learned by the Shiva for many years. I spoke to him many times, I, but every was all in the area in the realm of Limana Torah, and so therefore, in terms of hespedim and in terms of transmitting to you that which many others would uh, would be able to do, I'm, I find myself limited. I'm not going to be able to tell you mifsim. Oh, that those makes a great story, and they're true. But I don't have my sin. And so uh, you're just going to have to deal with my perspective as a, my limited perspective. As a sitting, sitting in a classroom, standing in an office, driving the reshiva where I, when, I, when, I, when I had the opportunity to drive him from place to place. And I was talking to him in learning. I, wasn't, I didn't speak to him in politics. I didn't speak to him in almost you know, other things, areas. I spoke to him in learning. And so therefore that's my... That's what I have to, to transmit to you. But the point is that one is very clearly known, anyone who knew the Rashiva knew the fact that uh, 
Uh, you could say about him the same thing I, used to, I would say about about the Roshiva Zechazad Kodesh Levrocha, the Roshiva's father. And it's based on, uh, we learn, we say Motzi Shabbos, some people say it, some people don't say it, but it's a Chamaim Chazal. Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Bechol mokum shato motzi gedulosu shel HaKodesh Baruch Hu, shoma to motzi an v'sanuso. Wherever you find gedulosu, the greatness of HaKodesh Baruch Hu, that's where you find is Anivus, and the Gemara goes on to say it from the Minat Torah, Minat Neviyah, Minat Ksuvim. But there's a different perspective that I think you need to understand about that Maimar Chazal, because it really works backwards also. Bechol mokum shata motze an v'sanuso, shamata motze gedulosu. Because we know that the comes to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, me'ish Moshe anav me'od mekol adam. The godless of his Torah also was transmitted by the fact that his anivus, was beyond was beyond reproach. Was as as great as anyone could ever be. And the Roshiva Zeret Tzadik Levracha. Everybody knew him as he was the manik of Klal Yisrael, the manik of the world. Everybody looked towards him. Everyone turned to the Egros Moshe for Psak Halacha. Everyone came to him for Anhaga. It it overshadowed everyone in the everyone in the world. After Baron was Nifter. After the tear of Rav Aaron, everything fell on the shoulders of the Roshiva Zechot Tzadik Baruchah. Nevertheless, he was on of Ma'od. His name was Moshe, so it fit in perfectly. But uh, so much, but it was so much so in terms of the Roshiva's godless that Rav David, my Rebbe Zechot Tzadik Baruchah, he was always in the background. Nobody knew who he was. We in Yeshiva, we knew who he was. Uh, we knew who he was. Uh, we we knew the we knew that he was the the individual that was uh, the Truma Mali Mokom. We knew that in Yeshiva at the time, but the world at large, they had no idea who he was. He sat in the back of the base midrash in those days before the Shiva's Petira. He sat in the back of the base midrash in a back bench. He davened behind uh, Davin Shmon Esrei, where everyone would all the rabbanim would come into the shul from the lower east side. They'd walk to the, to Mizrach. He always stood behind a pillar in the back. Nobody even recognized him. They didn't see him. He was just a plain, one of the ordinary people in the yeshiva people assumed. So much so that I will tell you, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a troublesome story, actually, at the time that it happened. But, you know, you have to give a lot of that people didn't know who he was. After she was Petira, I have the... My, my oldest son, my oldest son, Maishi, was, uh, was with a friend, he was in yeshiva, and he went to the, uh, he went to one of the rabbim in yeshiva to tell him he wants to take the time one day to go down to the Lower East Side to speak to Rabbi David and ask, ask him for a bracha and go to speak to him. So the Rebbe at that time, and at the time I bothered, because I knew, I knew who the yeshiva was, but he didn't. He said, where are you going? To the East Side? Where are you going? He's not his father. <laughs> Where are you going? This is how long ago? 35 years ago? Right? 35 years ago, someone could say, Where are you going? What are you doing? Today, he'd probably be the first in line for a bracha if he had the opportunity. But then, who, who are you going to? It's a, it's a world that doesn't exist anymore. But the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> we know that the Chazal say, Eila told us, the, the Posuk says, Eilu told us Yitzchak ben Avram, Avram holed is Yitzchak. And Rashi brings from Chazal, what's Pshat Eilu told us Yitzchak ben Avram, Avram holed is Yitzchak. So we know the famous Rashi, that uh, the Lichani Ador, and Yitzchak had the same, the plasticonim, the plasticonim of, of Avram Avinu, they looked like twins. One of the reasons why Avram Avinu was mispalal for Zikna, because they actually looked the same. People saw Yitzchak, they saw Avram, they saw Avram, they saw Yitzchak, looked the same. Exactly the same. And that was the emphasis Rashi says in the Posuk. But the Klayoka gives another pshat that is significant and is appropriate. The Klayoka says, Ve'ele told us Yisuk ben Avram. So he says, Afal pisha ama shehoya ben Avram mikol mokom hutzruch lomar Avraham holidus Yitzchak. Why? Because in last week's parsha it also says, Be Yishmoel, it says Yishmoel ben Avram. Asher Yolda Hogor Hamitzris, though. There it says, Asher Yolda 
Hogar Mitzra, says the Kleyokar, that they're two different words that aren't exactly the same, but they have similar, similar meanings. It says in, in the Hebrew language, Kibaloshon Ivri, Yesh Chiluk Bein Loshon Bein Leloshon Tolada. There's a difference. Kiloshon Bein Yom Alepomim Afalo told us. In other words, you can call the, a Ben, Kol HaMalamid is Ben Chavero Torah Kilo Yoldo. And so he also has a din of Bonim. Bonim, a Ben, could be someone who is, someone who have a status of a child, even if he just, he, he's, he's, he only learns by someone else. And you find that the word bain, it says the Kleyokar, it's used, for example, it gives examples. Vahilo leben, in other words, by Moshe Rabbeinu. It says, Vahilo leben, by, by, uh, by Basparo. Obviously, it wasn't her son, but Vahilo leben. It says by, uh, by Esther, it says, Vahilo lebas, by Esther. But it obviously, it wasn't his, his daughter, but it says, Vahilo lebas. And Avram is called Av Hamon Goyim. So Av Hapishaloyaladam. He's called the Av Hamon Goyim. He's the father, right? So therefore, everybody else, like every Ger is a Ben Avram or Bas Avram. So says the Kleyokar, there's a difference. Kima Shahadam Mikabel Teva Malamdo. There's nature and nurture, says the, says the uh, Kleyokar. There's nurture. If you learn from somebody, you learn his Menahogim, you learn his Hanhogis. So it becomes part and parcel of you. But it doesn't necessarily become your essence of what you are and who you are. It depends. At different people accept it differently. Different people absorb it differently. People be different people uh, 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 are seen differently because of it. I will masha other mekabel teva molido, but with the, your parents, that which you have genetically. Genetically, both spiritually, genetically, and physically, spirit, uh, genetically, uh, genes. So zem kabel teva molido zeb etzem. That's part and parcel of who you are. And velo yishtana. That's not going to change. Im yanuv kachal tivo. If you allow it, you work on it. It becomes part of you. Im lo mitzad rov charitzos vishtadlos vehergel yofa lovel lede teva sheni. Okay. You can come, you can, you can change, you can change your Teva if you work hard to be differently, than, different than your natural tendency. But if you merge the two together, says the Kleyakar, you become one and the same as the father, the child, the Tolodo, says the, says the, the Kleyakar. That's what it means when it says, Eile told us Yitzchak ben Avraham, but it's not just Yitzchak ben Avraham. By, by Yishmuel it says Ben Avram also. But there it says, but he had, but who was the Molid? The Molid was Hagar. Here it says Yitzchak Ben Avram, Avram, holy this Yitzchak. Yitzchak carried both aspects of Avram Avinu. And we can say the same thing by the Rebbe Seich Tzadik, the Kodesh Levracha. He was not just a Ben of his father, he was a Talmud of his father, he was a Talmud Muvik of his father. And just like the Shiva Seich Tzadik was an Anna of Ma'od, Nikola Adam, <laughs> Reb David took it to a new level. Just took it to a new level. No job was too small. It was l'shem shemayim, l'shem mitzvah. And you'll hear the stories. And it's, I was, in the beginning, I was embarrassed to tell them over, but I see they're printed in newspapers already, so I can tell you also. So when we used to, just before the Roshiva's Petira, I, it was the, the, Reb David was called the Rosh Kailu then. He said, you want to know, if you want to see the Rosh Kailu? You want to come, you're coming to see the Rosh Kailu? Uh, that's the man filling the soda machine, going out. He used to, it was, he, for the kailo, there was a soda machine outside. He felt it was a chesed for the people, for the kids that you should have a soda machine. You can still buy a soda, a can of soda for 50 cents in Teresh Lime if you're interested in going down there. Because he didn't, had changed, the price hasn't changed in, in 50 years. It's still 50 cents. If it went up to, as long as they're breaking even, the shiva didn't care. Hey, that's, that was the price. And, uh, and if there was nobody around, if he saw that the machine was empty, was not being filled properly, so he used to take care of it himself. I thought that recently he had, wasn't doing it anymore, but I just read that from one of the, one of the maspidim that he was in yeshiva during Ben Azmanim, and, and there was nobody around to fill the soda machine, so he saw the yeshiva go out and open up the soda machine and start filling the cans. And when he asked, he said, Rashiva, let me do this, let me take care of it for you. He said, why? Why can't I do it? <laughs> I can do just as well as you can. Uh, so it's... Uh, 
there was the Anivas was it was it was marvel a la rank because it didn't mean anything to him. It was just so simple. It was so basic. That wasn't just the only thing. It took for it, I, I know the the year after when we and the cuddle dinner the Roshiva the Roshiva used to take care, well, continues to take care continue to take care of the cuddle dinners. He took care of the seating. He wanted to make sure the seating was done right. He didn't want to give it to anybody else. Imagine the Roshiva, the Gadol be Yisrael, the person who people look to towards to, to, to for all the most difficult shilas. He he had a bother. He he took the time to to make sure that the seating was done properly. Until very recently, at the very least. We, everybody knows that Parshas Tetzave, Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not mentioned in Parshas Tetzave. Every, it's one of the most famous every Torah comes around Purim time. You get Parshas Tetzave, everyone knows Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not mentioned in Parshas Tetzave. Why not? Well, Moshe Rabbeinu said, When he was trying to save Klal Yisrael, he said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, kill a tzaddik, a filo al tenai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was mekayim. He didn't took his name out of one. He didn't take his name completely out. He took him out of Parshish Tetzavah. Now, that always bothered me. That's kind of, uh, I mean, the Rabboni Shalom is tzaddik v'yosher Right? So, if Moshe Rabbeinu sacrifices himself for Klal Yisrael, and he's willing to say, What would you do in, when you have, you have a, such a, a raya net mehemna, such a shepherd who's willing to take care of your children with such dedication? And Moshe Rabbeinu is willing to take care of us and sacrifice himself, you'd say, huh, and you know what? I'm putting your name up in lights. There's going to be uh, in the sky every once a year, Pashas Tetzaved, it's going to, neon sign that's going to come on, Moshe Avdi, Moshe Avdi, Raya Mehemna. No, no. Moshe said, and Hashem takes his name out of Pashas Tetzaved. That's, that's, what, what, what that's, that's Sadiq Viyosha. What, is that, what, that sounds so strange. I don't know if it ever bothered you, but it always bothered me. That's how, that's how he got repaid for, for being such, such a sacrifice? But you have to realize that this is something very significant. Because what is the godless of Moshe Rabbeinu? Godless of Moshe Rabbeinu is that Moshe Avdi. Godless of Moshe, Atem Hadvekim Bashem Elokeichem Chaim Kulchem Hayom. The godless of the, the greater a person is, the more he reflects. The Boreola, Mahu Rahu, Mafato Rahu, Mahu Gomel Chasodim, Mafato Gomel Chasodim. So when you want to show the greatness of an individual, and you can show his greatness, his greatness reflects the Boreola itself, what greater Shevach can you do for a person? When does Pasha Tatava usually come out most years? The week of Moshe Rabbeinu's Yorzeit, Zayin Adar. But also comes out the week of Purim. Tatzav is usually Parsha Tzav is Zohar. They go, usually go together. And what's in the Megillah? What's in the Megillah? Where's Hashem's name in the Megillah? Oh, it's not there. Why not? Because it doesn't have to be there. Because his name's not in the Megillah, but he's there. He's no, you can you can see him wherever he goes. It's Mamish, it's Babel al Orion. It doesn't say his name, but you see here and there and here and here. There's Amelech, he's Akadish Baruchu. And in Parsha Tetzave, you see the godless of Moshe Rabbeinu. It doesn't have to say his name. Vata Tetzave, who's Atu? Moshe Rabbeinu. Akadish Baruchu, that was the neon sign that Moshe Rabbeinu emulated HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Moshe Anav Ma'od Mikol Adam that his name doesn't have to be there and you know he's there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name doesn't have to be there but you know he's there. Moshe Avdi. Raya Mehemna. That's the godless of Moshe Rabbeinu. That even through the Hester Panim we can see HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even through the Hester of Moshe Rabbeinu we can see him clearly. What greater, what greater Shevach to HaKadosh Baruch who gave to Moshe Rabbeinu than to equate Moshe Rabbeinu to the Borei Olam himself, Kaviyochel Rabbi. My Rebbe of David, his name is not anywhere in most places, you won't find his name. He wrote, uh, he wrote Haggadah Shel Pesach, 
He wrote about the calendar. But he's everywhere without his name. Without his name. The Hester Punim is there, but his presence is so lost today that if you listen to the people out there, what are we going to do across the board in all segments of Claudius Israel, anywhere and everywhere where you never knew that he existed? They're suddenly at a loss. They don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have anywhere to go. His name wasn't there. They didn't know. Nobody knew he was there. But the organizations and the and everybody else did know. And Mark says him Psochim that who uh, Arama there was Mark says in Daf Gimel in Psochim that there was a guy who went to Yushalayim and he was eating for the carbon Pesach and he came back and he was telling Rabbi Yudah ben Becerra, I got it. I, the Torah says you're not allowed to, that guy is not allowed to eat and Kol uh, Benecha lo Yochal Bo Kol Ora lo Yochal Bo I eat from the best parts of the Korban Pesach. He says, you the Becerra, they give you from the tail? He says, no, I never got from the tail. He says, ah, because they know who you are. That's why they didn't give you from the tail. He says, no, when I go next year, I'm going to ask for the tail. So he goes back, and the following year, he asks for the tail. And I say to him, the tail? The tail goes on the Mizpeach. That doesn't, we don't eat that. He says, oh, no, don't fool me. He says, who told you this? Or you the Becerra told me this. They realized something was wrong. They checked him out. They took care of him after that. But on the center of Yudav and Becerra, Shalchalul of Yudav and Becerra, Shalom Lachar of Yehudav and Becerra, Adaat bin Etzivin. Remember, Yudav and Becerra didn't go to Yushalayim for Korban Pesach because he couldn't go. So he was either Derek or Chokor, he wasn't well. Tesis talks about why he wasn't in Yushalayim, but he was far, far away. So they said to him, Adaat bin Etzivin, and your trap is spread out. Reb David was on the Lower East Side. Didn't leave the Lower East Side. Didn't want to leave the Lower East Side. Was happy on the Lower East Side. Wouldn't have cared if no one bothered him on the Lower East Side. And yet his impact was everywhere. Not just everywhere. Everywhere in the world. You all know, I'm sure you all have heard of Reb Moshe's Shurim on Pesach. Right? <laughs> but they're not. They were originally printed on a little pamphlet in Farsi Shlaim, put out by the Kailo with no name on it. And the Kailo was based on the Torah Ra, the, the Kailo of Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. So everyone assumed that those are the Shira, but the Doreshiva, the Doreshiva figured out, the, he, he did the test to figure out the Shira. They were Rabbi David's Shira. Rabbi David did the testing. I remember as a kid walking into the, what was called the, the Kailo office in those days. And finding beakers and uh, all kinds of different uh, ke uh, chemistry equipment sitting on Reb David's on Reb David's desk as he was doing his working, working on the working on the shurim. He didn't just do the shurim; he actually did the shurim twice. He ch changed it from the first version to the second version. There's a second version of the shurim, where he made shinuyim after the ha'aris that he had from it. Those are shurim. He didn't have. He didn't say. Hey, everybody quotes it. They take a look at all of those little mats that come out that say Reb Moshe's Shiurim. It, he didn't, <laughs> it didn't bother him. He did a service for Klal Yisrael. Everybody now has the Shiurim for the Shiurim for Pesach Kimat universally used. Who's are they? They're Reb David Shiurim. Take a look. You only have to do is look in the Kol Dodi Agoda, and he says clearly, I measured here and I measured there and I changed my mind here and I did it this way. And he writes what he, that he did it. He doesn't doesn't keep it a secret, but nobody nobody knows, and he doesn't it didn't bother him that nobody cared. He was happy they called it his father's shirum. Gesund to hate. Anyone who's been married has seen you know you've seen tenoyim right? Reb Moshe's tenoyim, right? When did they become? When did people start? No, it's using Reb Moshe's tenoyim. Well, it happened that once upon a time they didn't exist in print. They are the Rosh Hashivas tenoyim. That is true. How do I know the Roshiva's Tanoim? Because the Roshiva Zechat Tzadik Levrocho was the uh, Masada Kedusha for my parents. And in 1948, that's when my parents got married. In 1948, the Roshiva was the Masada Kedusha. And in those days, there were no, there, was a, there were Ksubis that were printed. There were printed Ksubis, but there were no printed Tanoim. They only had uh, uh, complicated Tanoim that the Roshiva didn't want to use. And so therefore, my parents' Tanoim, I have a copy of it. It's written on the back of an envelope. 
literally Roshiva's handwriting on the back of an envelope. He wrote the Tanoim out, and uh, it was signed. And my mother, she lived in Be Well. She still has, she still has the envelope, and uh, I have a I have a picture of a copy of it on the envelope. Until until uh, sometime in the mid '60s, those Tanoim didn't exist anywhere. Reb David asked at that time before Art Scroll was Art Scroll. When Mayor Zlatowicz was just doing art and uh, not, not doing the Svarim, and he was just a, a graphic designer and was printing invitations, he asked Mayor to print up a Tenoyim so the people should have a Tenoyim. And he used it, it was a, from, the, from the Kailil, and it was, a, it was to raise money for the Kailil. It was sold in Tversh Shalayim. As a, so he made up a, he made up a uh, a ksuba and a tenoyim, and if he, Rabbanim wanted to have a tenoyim, a printed tenoyim, they came to the Shalim, they got it, and the money went to the kail. Today it's all over. Who doesn't get married with Reb Meish's tenoyim? Who made it happen? Roshiva didn't make that happen. Reb David made that happen. Does anybody know that? Why would you know that? Did he make sure that everybody should know that? Why would he? I know what happened because I was there. But nobody fit. His, his imprint is everywhere. But Reb David is there everywhere. Shavers, whenever the Shaila is about shavers, who do people go to? They came to Rashiva. He sent them to Reb David. When there was a Shaila, when the, one point in time there was a Shaila with, with shavers and someone showed to Rashiva and Rashiva was looking at it and th thinking about it that maybe it would, might be okay. Someone said, Reb David said it's not okay. Rashiva said, Reb Put it away. Didn't want to hear about it anymore. Then go talk to Reb David. He was Samech on Reb David. And what, which shavers are acceptable, which shavers are not acceptable. Chaim Aruchim. The organization that deals with end of life issues. You, I, if you didn't notice the advertisements, I don't know why they had to bother advertising about it. But they did. They brought down that. I suppose they want people to know that at least they're hadracha. Until now, you wouldn't have known that. You wouldn't have known that. While the, while Rabbi was alive, they didn't they didn't announce we have hadracha from Rabbi Feinstein on end of life issues. But that's who they had hadracha from, because that's the only person that they were able to feel that they could go and have and the the world would trust whatever decisions they were coming up with. End of life issues came to came to to Rashiva. Day in and day out, day in and day, the same shaylas, and he handed he handled them as if it was the first time he was listening to them. Meanwhile, he heard them every single day, and he heard them a couple of times a day. I know there was one end of one situation. People begged me to get an appointment with with, with Rav David, and I arranged for it. And they weren't sure about what he said, and I had to call him up and ask him again. I was actually <laughs> I was bothering him, so he tried to he clarified it again for me to, to make it clear what they what, what they with them what they what they heard. He was the person from the minute from the from the from the minute Shiva was over by the Shiva Zayzal Levracha, Reb David was head and shoulders involved in Chinuch Hatzmoy in Eretz Yisrael. You would never know that, but the heads of Chinuch Hatzmoy were and down on the Lower East Side. I know when I was go, I go would go down to to, to the Chumashir on Fridays, and uh, there was always a line waiting to speak to Reb David. Chinuch Hatzmoy people always came in first. They were always there. They always had shilas. They always had to deal with. He was the again the go-to person. Do you know? Would anybody know this? If you weren't in yeshiva and you didn't see them standing outside on the line waiting to see Reb David after after his shir before Mincha on Friday, you wouldn't even know that he had anything to do with the organization. He raised money for the organization, Chinuch Hatzmoy. But he was a ve it was very dear to him, Chinuch Hatzmoy. And it was something that uh, that was very that was originally dear to Reb Aaron Zatzal, to Reb Shiva Zatzal. And Reb David took it over and he carried it. High Lifeline. I sat at the uh, at the Levaya. I sat next to a friend of a Simcha scholar who runs High Lifeline. So he was telling me, hey, Lifeline, I don't have to tell anybody what they do. He told me that one, at least once a month he came down to speak to Reb David. He says, I don't know what I'm going to do now. You know what Shilas they had? That's amazing Shilas, the unique Shilas that High Lifeline has to deal with. 
on a, on a, on a daily basis. So he says Reb David, he would ha take a, have a half hour, an hour, and Reb David would give him time in order to deal with the most difficult shilas of Chai Lifeline. He was their advisor. He was he he gave them. He told me. He said it's not just Shilas and halacha. Shilas and advice in, in advice. He told me. Rabbi Scala told me that well, one time he had an appointment just to tell you the expanse of who. I mean, there was the whole world, from one end of the world to the other, from all different types of Jews came down to Tveres Yishlayim. Simcha, he told me Simcha that he was once had a meeting, he had an appointment with Roshiva, but his appointment was pushed off because there were some emergencies going on. He was waiting and uh, the people who were there ahead of him were, he was meeting with, uh, with Rav Hillel David and Rav Hillel Cohen about some important issue. But then he was supposed to go in afterwards, and, but he, his, his appointment got pushed off. You see, Rav Zalman Leib, the Satna Rebbe came. He had to speak to Reb David, and of course, uh, Simcha had to take one off the side. And so Reb Zalman Leib left, and then afterwards, Reb Heschel Schechter came. Just to give you an idea of uh, just one day in the life. Does anybody know this? Did you know this before? Would anybody know this? Of course not. Why would you know it? Did any, <laughs> you probably had a, they probably, I don't know what, if you really knew anything about Reb David Feinstein before this week. You don't have to feel bad about that, I know, at least from my perspective. I know when, when Rebaran, Zechetzad of Kodesh Levrocha, when Rebaran, Rebaran, Rebaran built a Chinuch in America. When Rebaran was Nifter, I was in high school. And uh, I was in his Levi, Levi was on the Lower East Side. I re so I remember the Levi very clearly, but I had no idea who he was. Imagine if somebody not knowing who Rebaran was. A high school boy, didn't know how Rebaran was. No one bothered, no one taught me, no one taught me. I had no way of knowing, I didn't know. Now I know. Now I know. Okay, 60 years later, now I know. So, if it, 60 years from now you'll know who Rebbe Feinstein was, it'll also be something. If you didn't know before, so, it's still, there's still, what, there's still important some lessons that we can derive from it. Rebbe was very makbir on bin Hagim. He was a very, Minhagim was very significant to him. He was not, <laughs> didn't get angry, hardly. I'll tell you, when I say hardly, there were times he did get angry, but the most part, most times he was a very, as you would say, we would say in, uh, in the vernacular, laid back. Very laid back. He took things very calmly, didn't, uh, didn't get bent out of shape. And so he would say his, he would say what he had to say and say what, and, uh, whatever it was. Uh, he just uh, he would stay quiet. Uh, everybody talks about the fact he was such a quiet person. I don't know why they keep getting his uh, the parsha where he was born wrong, but uh, his parsha was not parsha shalach. His parsha was uh, so one place parsha shalach was his parsha. Some other place parsha korach was his parsha. It was baloscha. And the end of Baloscha, and people don't think when they think of, of uh, they always hear the story about Lashon Hara, so they think Lashon Hara must be Korach, Lashon Hara must be, uh, uh, must be Pasha Shlach, but it was Baloscha. Baloscha, the, the Maftir of Baloscha is a Marsha. So there was always, see, he held that the Rashiva told him that it's, 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 the Maftir of your Bar Mitzvah Parsha is significant. And so therefore he would say, that's why he was a quiet, he, would, he knew he was quiet. But he would always talk about Lashon Hara. It was some, one, of his, one, of, one of the topics that was in the Chumash year. He would talk quite often about the significance about not speaking Lashon Hara. He was a quiet person. He didn't, uh, he didn't, you know, he would ask you a question. He didn't like the question. He so, so if he really didn't like what you were asking, he just didn't answer you. Just didn't answer. But I once asked him one question about Minhagim. I'll tell you what I asked him about. I asked him, I happened to be kidney of some Pesach. I know there was a whole Shiloh, people bothering me about certain area in kidneys, and they wanted to know, but what happens if there was actually kidneys, and it was, and is it, it should be bottled? So I asked him. <laughs> it was innocent, but I'm, I'm assuming I wasn't the first person to ask him this question about kidneys becoming bottled. He almost blew my head off. 
What? What are you trying to do? The Gemitic of Kal Yisrael is not to use it. You're trying to be Mati Kitnias on Pesach? It upset him so, so much that these, the, all these efforts here, there, to Kitnias is something where Makbiran on Pesach, people treated it, always treated it with tremendous with severity. You're trying to be Mati Kitnias on Pesach? The Gemitic of Kal Yisrael. I asked him once about Olenu L'Shabeach. So he asked him if he inserted Shemesh uh, Tachavim. He told me he doesn't. To me, uh, they haven't until now. He didn't change. He never changes Nusach. Never changes Nusach. He says, "Who's to say what? You know what the future brings?" Alavai thinks should uh, in that case he should be wrong. But uh, we see that uh, things are things really have to change a lot. But he didn't insert Veshem uh, of him. He wouldn't, he didn't insert it because that's not, that it wasn't the minute. That's not what his father did. That's what he did. When it came to tefillin and mezuzahs, people trying to make changes, trying to add new chumras that the previous diaries didn't have, as if they didn't know how to wear tefillin properly and they couldn't make these changes, he was always opposed to it. He didn't want any changes. So there were people tried to make Nuhshi Nuyim and the Shalyad. He was very much opposed to it. And he didn't go any place. That's the reason he didn't go any place. Not with the Tzitzis, and not with Tzfilin. Whatever it was that the Kali Yisrael has been doing until now was very important to him that it should remain the way it is without making any changes. When you start making changes, who knows where those changes go? There's a, there's a, there's a, a famous word of the Dugna Magid about Baltosef becoming a Baltigra. And he didn't want to make changes to Minogim Claudius Yisrael. It was a, I went to a Gouda convention on Friday on a Matzi Shabbos. Somebody used to come to a Gouda convention on Friday, Matzi Shabbos. Uh, it was a Rav from Europe who was sitting in, after, after the end of the convention, at the, after the end, end of the session, he was sitting in with him for a while and talking to him about a certain subject. It was a Minig of Claudius Yisrael. Let's call it that way. And a minute had to do with a minute at Hasanis, it was a minute at Cloud Yisrael. And Reb David, this is, this is not what we did. This is not what, my, how I got married. It's not how my father got married. It's not how my grandfather got married. You want to be Machmir Yochumris. All right. You can do whatever you want, but you're not getting me to agree to that. That's not, that's not, I wouldn't agree to it. In fact, just the opposite. When I asked the Shiva this, this, this question, or when one of my children got married, and he said, our minig is not to do it. Not, we don't have a minig to be machmer. Our minig is not to do it. Anyway, I spoke to the Rav afterwards. He was Eishlohova, we're gonna, I'm not gonna listen. Anyway, whatever it is, he told me that he was going to go Eishlohova and do Keneged and make a Taram and make a Macho. Never happened. David was Min Hagim of Klal Yisrael. One of the, one of his famous lines, he had a number of famous pithy lines. Just be normal. He used to say that. One time I was one, once walked into him and he said, Frankel, the biggest bracha you could have is be normal. So if he was so normal, well, how come we started to hear the stories of Mosim, you know, the, the brachas that he had, Yeshua's that he piled Yeshua's. Again, I'm not familiar with them. I can't answer for them, but I will tell you one my shahaya. I was in the morning. Again, famously, Rabbi David never ate breakfast in yeshiva. He would always eat at one of the one of the local restaurants or pizza shops. Or if there was once they were closed, he went to other places. But when I was uh, when I when I was uh, when I was first married, I don't really, can't even tell you exactly when that was. I was eating breakfast in the restaurant and uh, Reb David came in with somebody else and was sitting at the next table. And this other poor fellow was telling, telling Reb David about, about uh, 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 certain nisim viniflos that uh, most seem from, from the Boston Rebbe. I'll tell you which Rebbe it was. It was the rest of the Rebbe. So I started to tell him a story about a fellow who the doctor said wasn't going to live through the night. And they went to the Rebbe, the Rebbe gave him a, gave a bracha, and uh, he, walked out of the, he walked out of the hospital. So Rebbe David looked at him and said to him, A mifus? That's not a mifus. You mean, you think you have a problem with the kayach tefillah? Tefillah, it's push it. Like, this is, tefillah works, oh, tefillah works. 
surprised. Filo worked. That's not a mifus. That mifus. That's not a mifus. Walk, uh, you know, uh, uh, fly through the air. But that, that you that you were misspelled for someone and it worked. That's not a mifus. Those are not. That's not different. That's not, not different. Navias. That's not mifusim. That's pushit and muna in a kaddish baruch hu. That's how we looked at it. That's a muna and tefila. I'm going back now. I'm going back now. A good 45, 50 years now. Yeah, probably 50 years. When nobody knew who he was. That was the Amun. That's who he was. I suppose uh, you may want to know some chidushim. I thought, uh, I don't know how much time do I have? A little bit longer? Some chidushim, I wrote down some chidushim. It's, uh, I mean, it's something to come up with. Something a little bit uh, different. I once asked, I once went to ask him, there was some, with candy man in the shul, and the kids were coming, and he had all different types of candies in it. They would have, uh, he would have uh, Laffy Taffy's, he would have lollipops, he would have hard candies, he would have uh, uh, soft candies. So he has a jar of numerous candies. And so, the child is a gil of Children come to him for candy and they dig through the candy jar. So I was wondering if it's a if it was an appropriate thing that uh, in order to reach the candies that he wants, Linian Borer on Shabbos. <laughs> Again, one of Reb David's classic statements. He said, Frankel, candy is candy. <laughs> he told, uh, it's a similar story that uh, Rabbi Wright tells over, I don't know if, you, if he had it published or not, talking once about, there was a child about ducks. And he told, and he asked him about the ducks, and he, the answer was, a duck is a duck. You know, it's uh, the same thing. Candy is candy. That's no, there's no boy by candy, he said to me. There's no, and you don't have to be, my, and uh, for children, you don't have to be mafia like that. He did say, peanut candies and raisin candies, that's too mean him. Hard candy and hard candy, irrespective of the size and color, is uh, like the top in the uh, Havana. It's like the top and the bottom of the kid chicken. And, uh, but hard candy and soft candy may be a different, and, uh, but it's probably one mini said, an adult could be machmir, but for children you don't have to worry about it. Just uh, agav, just to tell you, socks are not socks. That uh, socks are not socks. If you just have socks mixed up and you have different types of socks, he said that's different. But I don't want to get into the into the uh, nitty gritty details of those cases. Uh, but shirts are shirts. So uh, Zman Kiddush Levana. So some people are mocked that they say, make sure that uh, they know So Zman Kiddush Levana is they give you Jerusalem time. And so they tried it, so they want to tell you, so someone Kiddush Levana is actually seven hours late, earlier here, because it's uh, Eretz Yisrael, seven hours ahead of us. David told me, he told me over that there were Shiva Zechaz at Levracha, and he held up saying, he, uh, he said it didn't make a difference. And you can use Jerusalem time for Kiddush Levana, not only in New York, he told me even in Los Angeles. That's a big Kiddush. It's a good thing to put in your pocket and hold on to it. If it's supposed, especially on in one of, the, one of those months where it's raining a lot. Reb David was the resource on what it meant to Hanigris Moshe. Sometimes I was very frustrated. I got fr people would people would quote the Igris Moshe in cases that they, wasn't what the Rashiva was actually saying. They read into it things, and they had someone to ask who knew what it really meant. We used to go and ask. The way I used to bring the sefer. Yes, well, what does this mean? And I would sometimes find out surprising things about what it meant. But he was the, when he was here, he was the resource. We don't have that resource anymore. But David came from Europe. But when he came, he was eight years old. Very bright eight-year-old. No question about it. But if you've read any of the biographies, you know that the Roshiva did not teach his children any Torah when they were in Luban. It was against the law. It wasn't just against the law. It wasn't Dina de Malchusa. It was Sakonis de Fashis. 
and uh, it wouldn't have accomplished anything if he ended up sent to Siberia. So he didn't, he didn't, that's, but that's why, because when he saw that it wasn't working out, and Rabbi David was not getting a chinuch, and he was already 70 years old, and he couldn't, he didn't have a chinuch, he only knew Aleph Beis, and he knew how to read Tanakh, we'll talk about that in a second. But more than that, he didn't know, because he couldn't be taught. That's what, that's what saved the Feinstein family for the world. Reb David's Chino. At a time before there was the World War II, before they knew that there was a Germany, before they knew, under Stalin, or Shiva would have stayed under Stalin, worked with his people. But for, for his son's Chino, he couldn't stay. That he wouldn't do. And so that forced him to leave Europe. Or Reb David, uh, they traveled through, and they had, before they got visas here, he ended up in Latvia. I know I'd heard that uh, he learned Aleph Bays on his own, self-taught. He would go to one person and ask him what that letter is. They told him an Aleph, and that letter Bays, what's a Bays? And he taught himself to the point where when he, by the time he came to America, I heard the same story happen in Latvia. I don't know where that story came from, but I know for sure the story here. There was a, one of the early Talmudim of Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Al Brown, Sechrona Levrocha, who was a friend of uh, my family, and uh, he once said to me, you don't even know who Reb David is. You think you know who he is. You don't know who he is. When he first came to America, he used to come into the Beisam Edrish. And we used to give him, we used to say, tell him the first word of a Pasuk. And then he would go and say the whole Pasuk and sometimes the whole Perik. And don't think not only in the VM Rishonim, eight years old, I remember. He was originally self-taught. Not only in the VM Rishonim, he had a phenom obviously a phenomenal memory. Not in Nishkan Pasha to mention. But when he's eight years old, he's trying to tell me he knew Nevi'im Achronim by heart. But what you have to und also understand is, once upon a time, people thought, you know, when you can become a Gadol Yisrael, you become a Gadol Yisrael if you were raised in Europe, and you were raised here, you come from Eretz Yisrael, you come from uh, Poland, you come from Russia, you come from, from Lita, you know, the, the old generation, they could become Gadol Yisrael, Americans can't, can't, nothing, can't get, can't get Americans, you know, Americans know how to play ball, Reb Dovin knew how to play ball, take it from me. I only know, I, I, in terms of his, his, how, his expertise as a second baseman, I only know from Rebruven. That I never saw. But I do know he played handball. He beat me. So I know he played handball. And uh, so he would go out, he would go out into the yard and play ball. He'd play ball with the Talmudim. He was a regular American Rebbe, right? Right. What's the point? The point is, that two points. Number one, that you can, he went to Tver Shishlayim for elementary school, and then he went to Tver Shishlayim for high school, and then he went to Tver Shishlayim for basic medicine. Learned. Yeah, his Rebbe was Rav Moshe Feinstein his whole life. That's true. That's who his Rebbe was. That is true. But he was, even though he was born, he wasn't born here, he grew up here. And he became Rav David Feinstein, the God of Israel. <laughs> Hillel Chazal say it's Mechayi V'saniyim Gemara gives a whole slew of uh, a group that you know if someone's going to come to Shemayim and say uh, how can I be how could I have become a uh, Talmud Chacham I could have been Gadol Yisrael I, I was too poor Chazal said we are as poor as Hillel and the whole story Chazal tell the whole story of Hillel on top of the roof Hill was extraordinarily poor. I couldn't become a Gadol Bishrael. I grew up in America. I only knew ball, how to play ball. Reb David's going to be my of assault. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a big thing. Nishkan Kleinekeit. Reb David grew up here. We can't say, can't, can't blame it on the Europeans anymore. The Gadol Yisrael that were raised here in America. David had, had a lot of information. He went to went to high school here. He had uh, he read the the books in high school here, and he utilized it all through life. 
They didn't, he had, again, the phenomenal memory that he had could only could be seen sometimes. He was, uh, Mayor Zlatowicz once took Reb David on a tour of Albany. And uh, the tour guide started talking about how the, the capital, the Albany, you have to Albany, that's, a, that's the capital of New York, for those that don't know that here. Albany, the capital building in Albany, and I don't expect anybody in Connecticut to know this, but I'm sure everybody in New York knows when the capital building in Connecticut was built. The tour guide gave the date. And Reb David said, no, that's not the right date. He told him the right date. The tour guide said, no, you're telling me the right date? He was insulted. They went quickly to get out of the uh, encyclopedia, and they opened it up. And lo and behold, Reb David was right. So Mayor Zlata would say, Esther Shiva, how'd you know that? He said, I read it when I was a kid. And that's not the only time those things happened. Okay. But we all have our talents. We all have our koiches. We all have our ability to focus on avoidas habore and to maximize who we are and what we are and become the best we can become. Yeah, I can't tell you how great a, a Talmud, how great, a, how, how smart Rav David was. That's not possible. I can't even tell you how great a Masmidi was. That's also not possible. I didn't see him 24-7. I didn't see a lot of things. But I do know, from my small, limited perspective, what an American buffer can become is unbelievable can become Mamish, an Eved Hashem, whose tentacles are out in the entire world, that the whole world depends upon him, the shoulders to carry the world through his Hester upon him, to emulate a Kaddish Baruch Hu's Hester upon him. It was Hanivis beyond belief. It's a simple person. That's what he considered himself. That's how he dressed, that's how he walked. I didn't tell you, Thursday night, if you needed to speak to him, you could speak, anybody could speak to him Thursday night. He was usually by the vegetable counter in the supermarket if you wanted to catch him there, shopping for Shabbos. That's what he did. That's what we all do. But we don't all become G'dayli Yisrael. It's within our power for that to happen. Sholach, Sholom Lechor, Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra. That bin tsivin to the Sayyid Prus of Yushalayim. Halavai on all of us, it should be able to be said, Shalom Lacha, wherever you are. But your impact and what we do and what we leave in this world and the impression we leave in this world should be extended to the maximum that Akash Baruch gave us the ability to accomplish. It's a loss, a loss that uh, is immeasurable. And I'm not even here, I'm certainly not the one. I know from, for me it's on a personal level. I have a pile of Shilas I have on my desk that I was planning to ask as soon as Reb David was feeling better. He had come out of the hospital and he seemed to be improving and I was just holding on until like, Baruch Hashem he would feel better and I would be able to call him up. I, could, I knew that maybe I wouldn't be able to go down but I'd be able to call him and talk, about the, talk to him on the phone and ask him a whole list of Shilas. They're still sitting there on my desk. Empty. No answers. Muran Bracha says that when the Talmidim of Rav came back from Rav's Levaya, famous Gemara Brachas, they sat down to eat and then they had a bench and they didn't know what to do and they didn't know if they said Zimun, yes Zimun, no Zimun. And they write Kri again. They realize Rav's not even here and we already don't know how to bench. Rav David's not here and we already have Shilas so and we don't know how to answer. It's a chaval for all of us. Those of us who knew him and those of us who didn't. As time progresses and you get to know who he was, because you will, just like I know who Rebaran is, you'll know who Reb David was, and you'll understand what a tremendous loss it is. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bring us to Geula quickly, 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 because it's uh, really, things are, are not in a good place for us with all of the losses that we've sustained over the last uh, year, year and a half. Less than a year, really. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bring us the Geula. Bila Amovas L'Netzach, Amoch Hashem L'Kim Dima Mi'al Kalponim. Thank you for listening.